Hello, buddy of Boo and YouTube. It's Bernie Goldbank on the 13th of July, 2014. Have a look at Sunday papers. I bought the Sunday Times and Sunday Business Post. I'm one of those little timers who likes print, I guess, to point out some stuff that's interesting for people who like to follow the Irish flow. Front page, Sunday Times. MEPs unite to thwart Hogan rule. Now, they would be members of the European Parliament, elected by the population of Ireland. Sarah McInerney and Stephen O'Brien point out the majority of Ireland's MEPs are opposed to the nomination of Phil Hogan as European Commissioner, and they intend to encourage their colleagues in the European Parliament to campaign against his appointment. Easy to find that. Go Google for Phil Hogan. You'll see all kinds of stuff thrown up. You might call them disappointments, prejudice, or just ham-handedness. Phil's an interesting bloke. Coffee bars and their Wi-Fi fail the filter test. It's an article by Stephen Dunn in the news section of Sunday Times, more appropriately being viewed as a commercial profile for Simon Graham of WebWise, who points out, it's common sense. Pornography should be filtered in public spaces where children are likely to be present or to hang out. You know, the filtering system's a, it's a problem. I mean, like, what makes what should be filtered? You use WebWise's filters, and you're gonna end up with stuff that uh, that I need to see cut out. That's been my experience. Television, television has been revolutionized. What's on the box is a preoccupation of people who use Twitter, says a study. Siobhan McGuire points out that Jason Brownlee, the chief executive officer of Color Text, a British data firm that conducted a study, said. The results show us a pattern of peak viewing and the times when we use social media frequently overlap. It's therefore not surprising that viewing and social media use often go hand in hand. Live comments on shows, hashtags are followed, and spoilers galore. Starting on Thursday, the Irish Film Institute has four days of workshops of films and activities for kids on the 17th to the 20th of July in the middle of Temple Bar. I have I.ie forward slash family fest for stuff that you might be interested in. I like salmon. There's some in our fridge. There's a fish farm had no license to take lake water, says John Mooney, pointing out marine harvest, which produces most of Ireland's 120,000 tons of farmed salmon each year, had no option but to remove water from its fish farm, pipe it out into the bay without asking permission first from Galway County Council. Otherwise, they would have lost their, they would have lost a season of salmon. So they did it without asking permission. It makes the news. Consultants are forming a breakaway group over insurance fees, a news area, a news item from the Sunday Business Post. Susan Mitchell writes about the dilemmas different doctors are facing. Here's one. Dr. Sharon Moss, consultant gynecologist at Beacon Hospital. 35000 in medical indemnity in 2011. Now she's going to pay 97500 for the same indemnification. Massive, isn't it? Massive. They know where you are, tells the story of Mark Ty and John Mooney. Actually, what they did was they visited Dupton's crypto party, where there's been several techies telling how to stay off the radar scope of people who want to do surveillance on you. It's a phenomenon, crypto parties are, where technically literate teach the masses how to take basic steps to protect their online privacy, like downloading Tor, turning off certain devices that might be on your phone. Most people simply don't realize how much they've given up through apps or use of Facebook. Judging from what we read in different reviews, lots of people are angry that the government and big corporations are spying and secretly collecting data on them. That is true. What are you doing? Or do you care? Public Parts is a book written by Jeff Jarvis, and he suggests that you know, you get stuff for free because you give up stuff, give up privacy. Eleanor Mills talks about being brainwashed by ISIS. She has a profile of some British girls that, well, basically what they've done, these British-born girls, if they've, they've given over themselves to the jihadist cause, perhaps because they're in a profound grip of identity crises, uh, not knowing they may be becoming suicide bombers or mules for money, well, if you're concerned about that, and you're a young girl or a mom of one, you might buy the book Islam for Dummies on Amazon to learn more about the religion. 
Here's saving advice from Mark Channing. He's pointing out stuff that you might get on the back of uh, stuff you do, like you might have a kid who could be on the child model the asset. The model agency in Dublin says that both mom and dad have to agree to let the kid do it. You might want to rent your car from Ego. Is that what it's called? Go Car from Go Car in Dublin, like the lovely Claire Moore has done. She was walking to and from work and noticed that her Toyota RAV4 was costing her nearly eight thousand a year, even though she was barely driving it. Or you can advertise on your car. One car advertising pays a fixed monthly fee to have an advertisement fixed to the external service of your car for a period of three to twelve months. Hmm. Maybe I can have, make enough money to get fuel, heating oil under our tank. I'd like to read this by Justine McCarthy. It just really bugged me hearing this story. I've heard it on the radio plenty of times, but she cites from a report uh, that talks about tragedies that face women in maternity hospital. So this is exactly verbatim. I normally do a cesarean section, Eamon D. Valera said, but because you're such a good Catholic, I'll do a symphysto... I can't say the word. Symphysiotomy. You're a Catholic family. You'd be expected to have at least 10 children. If you have a cesarean, you can have only three. The baby is as big as yourself. Why do small women marry big men? I'll have to stretch your hips and straighten your pelvis. So basically, it's a it's many, many people have given testimony as part of the UN Committee Against Torture, survivors of symphysiotomy. You can see it if you're on my YouTube clip. SOS. If you Google UNCAT space SOS, you get these stories. Horrific. I don't know what the government's going to do anything about it. Steve Dempsey, coders are coming. Newsrooms may never be the same, and media marketing of the Sunday Business Post points out that we're at a transitionary point. He's citing Dan Sinker, who heads up the Open News Project. It's a three years old project now. Collaboration between news organizations, either being at a technical level or a reporting level, it's a big thing where everyone's helping to move forward based on uh, the sharing of tech and journalistic expertise. Siobhan Brett, Points out something clever that Spin uh, 103.8 FM is doing. A web player, which allows online mi- listeners to compile unlimited playlists of pop music aired by Spin. I don't think I can get it on my Windows phone. I'll use this one. It's a Nokia 1520. It's recording me now for audioboo.fm. Stroke top gold. And finally, some gadgets. I need gadgets. Here we are. Get your fix. Everybody needs power. This is called the Power Slab. Easy act. 10,000 milliamp hours, 28 euro, available from Amazon.ie. You can plug a lot of stuff in it. This is probably what I really need. The Goal Zero Sherpa 50 for 200 euro. A power station packing enough juice with all the adapters you need to even bring a, a laptop up from being dead. And in my dreams, a quirky writer USB keyboard. Looks like something you'd pick up in a flea market. The steampunk inside me wants one of these for connection by USB or Bluetooth to a tablet. Occupying my day, shifting the house, reading Bill Bryson's excellent One Summer, America 1927. More on that over where I live, insideview.ie or Top Gold on Twitter. For me, Ernie Goldback, The Blown American, and County Chip, to you, wherever you are. Thanks for watching on YouTube and listening on Audio Boo. Bye for now.